Morocco, a country popular for its culture, vibrant colors, desert landscapes, historical architecture, and bustling markets. In this video, I'll be taking you through our 10-day journey through Morocco from the enchanting blue streets of Chef Shawin to the sand dunes of Merzouga, all for under $500 per person. In this video, I'll take you through the good, but also take a dip in some of the darker aspects of travel here. Oh, uh, who's a hallucinogenic? It's, it's taking off of it, yes. If you're new here, welcome to my Globin, where I explore countries as well as the unique fitness opportunities or places to work out while traveling along the way. This is my Globin Morocco. Our journey begins in Casablanca, the largest city in Morocco and its key business center. Casablanca was our hub into Morocco. The city is home to what used to be the largest mosque in Africa, known as the Hassan II Mosque. A status that only changed in 2023. The courtyard is open to visitors, but the interior is only open during prayer time. This mosque is situated over the Atlantic Ocean, and it fits nearly 105,000 congregants. As you approach it, you'll feel overwhelmed by its sheer size, with a colossal minaret that reaches 210 meters into the sky. The design is based on traditional Moroccan architecture, and it's truly a sight to behold. The courtyard was bustling right after evening prayers as families enjoyed the weather. This is definitely a sight that is worth seeing. On the same day that we arrived, we took the bus to Fez to spend the night there and then headed on over to the picturesque town of Chef Shawin, famously known as the Blue Pearl of Morocco. Nestled in the Nif Mountains in northwest Morocco, this charming town was originally built as a defensive fortress to defend against the Portuguese in the late 1400s and quickly became home to the Muslim and Jewish refugees of the Spanish Inquisition. Today, it's famous for its Instagrammable blue buildings and streets. The city also happens to be home to an army of cats, who are literally everywhere. Go up to the cat and pet it. Hey, what are you doing? What are these guys doing? While you're here, it's worth exploring the hills and going up to the abandoned hilltop mosque where you can look down at the town below. And of course, you have to spend time in the Medina exploring the shops and food. As far as food goes, you can find lots of traditional options, including tagine, couscous. This is vegetable and meat and porcelain. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, delicious mint tea, which became an obsession of mine after this trip. In addition to these normal travel activities, I had two additional tasks on my itinerary. The first was to find the best barber in the city. See, I had an exam the day I left for Morocco and had no time for a fresh cut, so I had to think fast. I went up to every random guy with a fresh cut on the street, trying to find the best barber in town, and they all said the same name, Mu'ayyad. And with only a name to go off of, I searched the whole city until I found him. Um. 
And I have to say, as someone who's only trusted one barber over the past decade, this is probably one of the scariest moments of my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and also, I had no idea how much it would cost. Between the shampoo, hot shave, and flame door services, I was definitely freaking out a bit there. Huh? I've never had this much volume in my hair. You do it, whatever. This is what a, what is it, $4 haircut in Morocco looks like. You guys are shampooed, cut. Was, oh, you got your beard. You got yeah, your beard. beard. Hair and beard. Um, hair and beard. He like he put shampoo in it, volumized it. You know. But I think it still looks good. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank right. you. Thank you. <laughs> so how does it feel to be married to a Pantene Pro V model? I didn't know I was. Right now. So weird. With the day coming to a close, it was time to hit the second item on my bucket list and find a gym. If you're in the Medina, you can easily find your way to Musculation Fitness. It's a very small and crowded gym, but they do have a decent selection of machines and weights that will let you get a lift in. After my workout, I had a chance to briefly chat with the gym owner. What's your name? Uh, my name is Rashid. And you're the owner? Owner of the gym? Yeah, I'm uh, How long have you had the gym? Uh, six years now. Six? Six years. Six years, okay. Yeah. How much is it for uh, one? And the gym for the sales? Uh, for one day? For one day, 50 dirhams. And for one week? Uh, one week, 50, 60 dirhams. Okay. But in the, in the one month, I have to... Uh, one, uh, one hundred person there. It's, 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 okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice. So welcome uh, to Shift Shower and welcome to my gym. I nice to meet you. Nice people. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Thank you so yes. much. Thank you. The next day, we continued to explore the city and also went hiking to the old Roman ruins. Similar to the hilltop mosque, this offered a vantage point from which we could overlook the city. That's it. At sunset, the call for prayer rang throughout the city. With our last day in Chef Show and coming to a close, we found a rooftop cafe where we watched the sunset and were treated to a performance from a local group. Before we left the city for good, we still had one more question to ask. During our time here, we did occasionally notice people consuming some kind of strange substance. Curious, we asked our host for more details. <laughs> He's recording this. He wants to know what this is later. Yeah. So, that's mixed. Okay. You just tip it in. The old men would tip all, and you mix it, and you smoke it in your pipe. So you wouldn't put that in your nose? Right. The tobacco, yes. So maybe that's what that a was. A lot of the, especially the older men, some younger men now, I suppose, they have a little plastic bottle. And in it is a black or dark brown powder. Maybe it was brown. No? And that goes on to... Yeah, yeah, that's what he did. did. That's what he did. That, that's yep, what he did. Exactly. That's so that was tobacco? Very strong tobacco. That's yeah. tobacco. Uh, oh, what was a hallucinogenic? If you, you take enough of it, yes. Okay. Well, it's like mixed if with tobacco. you smoke it on its own. Oof. But he just went like this. So is that, yes. is that yeah. also hallucinogenic? Well, it's, if you take enough of it, yes. 
Okay. Because when he told me, he's like, I do this and I'm normal. That's what he kept saying to me. I think he was trying to tell me he's not getting high. I don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't know what he was saying. Well, it's, that's what it was. That's what he was doing. It's an intense nicotine rush. Okay, that's probably. So you good. get high. It's a very Because he said I don't thing. smoke. Yeah, he said I don't smoke. Ah, so that's what yeah. he's doing. It's the tobacco he's yeah. snorting. Okay. Yeah. You learn something new. So that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. But the tobacco is also illegal here. Wow. <laughs> Cigarettes too? No, no, no. No. Okay. No, meaning the black. The really strong. The strong. Mountain to back. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Not that we we don't need it. <laughs> well, that's a fun note to go out on. With that, we headed out to our next destination. What's that? Fez is the second largest city in Morocco. It's home to Morocco's most famous medina, known as Fez El Bali. This is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of the largest car-free urban areas in the entire world. Here you'll find busing markets, restaurants and more. Essential, just oil. Okay. Essential perfume. Okay. But as you're shopping, be careful to make sure that you're finding quality goods and avoiding scams. But it's. Oh, chocolate. What's it doing? No, no, no. Art. You didn't eat this morning? <laughs> no? Is this the artist's name? The name of the artist. Boyet. Hardly, art. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> see? See? Nothing. Wow. <laughs> yeah. How long does it take to put in the plate? This one took yeah. about one day, one day and a half. If they are plated or not, because this is lower silver, tin, and a wood copper in the other way. They are not plated, see? Mm. Even underneath it's a weight. It's for use, for saving. Uh, this is what you find in the market. Just a brass plate dipped on silver. Oh. With the time get tarnish. When you scratch, the silver gold it's become yellow. It's just plated. These just are just plated. plated. This That's is real silver. So. With the real teapot for saving. Save all the life, stay always in good condition. Just when you use it, you clean it to water and soap. Yeah. In Moroccan, we buy chipas once in life. It has once to be and it lasts your whole, yeah. It has to be a real one. We do have. So basically, like when you buy a teapot, the real have, one, it's yeah. supposed to last you a generation, right? It stays for a generation. Yeah. We have that shape we call it camel. I see it. <laughs> we do have imperial. This is the size we have. We do have more bigger, we do have more smaller. This is the plain one. In the Medina, you will come across ancient tanneries which have been a vital part of this city's economy for centuries. In these factories, workers will process animal hides in a series of liquids composed of things such as cow urine, quicklime, and pigeon feces. This will soften the skin and prepare them to be dyed. As you can imagine, the odor can be quite repugnant. It was here in Fez's Medina that I was able to find really nice, high quality, tradition Moroccan jaleba. What's up? The Medina is also home to several architectural sites, such as the University of El Qurayyin, the oldest university in the world. It is believed to have been originally founded in 857 by a woman named Fatima Al Fahri. There's also several other madrasas and mosques integrated into the old city.
While here, we stayed at Riyadh Mazar Fez, which offered a luxurious stay for only $60 to $70 per night. The Riyadh actually ended up being its own complete experience. While in Fez, it's important to know that much like other Moroccan cities, there is an old city with the Medina, as well as a new city with modern shops and buildings. And although the Medina is a must visit, the modern city has its own attractions. There's quite a few things to do. You can visit and relax in the tranquility of the Janan Sibyl Gardens. The modern city is also home to Avenue Hassan II, a street that has plenty of modern shops and restaurants. You can also visit the main gates of the royal palace. The actual building is still regularly used by the king of Morocco, and the interior is therefore not open to the public. And if you're looking for a workout, you can find gyms such as Olympia Gym. Olympia is a very modern facility and complete gym with squat racks, machines, studios, and even a cafe. All the weights had a vibrant color scheme, which I thought was cool. They had enough weights and variety to get in leg day. Thing is, there's no towels, so this is what I'm gonna have to use to dry off. I don't even know. We took an overnight bus to Merzuga, which dropped us off at approximately 6 a.m. in the morning. We checked into our Airbnb to rest up quickly and then headed out to explore the rest of Merzuga. Merzuga is a small village in southeastern Morocco which borders Urukshebi, one of the many famous sand dunes of the Sahara. We arrived on a Friday morning, so I made sure to catch a Juma or Friday prayers at the local masjid. While Merzuga is a great launching point for exploring the Sahara Desert, it's also a great place for bird watching. Yeah, that's right. The lake of Merzuga forms close to town in the wet season. We tracked an hour out of town in the desert heat to get to the lake. But the sights were totally worth it as we came across a vast array of bird life, including a flock of giant flamingos that lined the horizon. After exploring Merzuga, we left for the Sahara Desert Tour. We met with the guides of Addo Travel, just outside one of our hotels, and got on the camels to venture towards the desert camp. relatively simple, but most importantly, it was safe and clean. So much for cold. That would be cold at night. After we arrived, I wanted to put myself to the test and try something new, a high intensity workout in the Sahara Dunes.
At night, we were treated to a traditional Berber food, followed by a campfire and live performance. But we wandered off as we noticed how clear the sky was, with the great sight of the moon and stars. Along the way, we found a new friend who joined us the rest of the night. Shine the light, shine the light. The tiny cat. We would make a friend of the desert. The Sahara Desert. I wanted to get a picture of the stars, but I wasn't really sure how to set up my camera. Fortunately, T-Mobile came through with international 4G. After some quick googling from the middle of the desert, I figured out the right exposure settings and got the pic that I was hoping for. The next morning, we got up early to get on our camels and head back to Merzuga. From there, we departed on an eight-hour bus ride and soon found ourselves in the hustle and bustle of Marrakesh. Before we delved into the insanity, we needed to find something to eat. The bus dropped us off at Jama'a al Fina, a lively marketplace that is the central hub in Marrakesh's old city. And it's not hard to find food here. In fact, if you're not looking for food, it'll come to you. Okay, so uh, they basically, if you walk in the middle of this, it's like they smell the blood in the water and they just come after you trying to serve food. I'm good, thank you. So the minute you enter this Medina, everyone comes after you and starts calling you skinny. It's hot right now. <laughs> the market remains alive at night, and a walkthrough will take you past glowing street lanterns and shops. In the day, you realize how endless the options truly are as you try to navigate this impossible labyrinth of shops and markets. The streets are adorned with all sorts of craftwork, clothing, spices, and much more. But much like other places in Morocco, you need to be ready to haggle your way to a fair price. While Marrakesh is known for its hustle and bustle, there's still plenty of architectural marvels that allow you to get away from it all. After a nice rooftop breakfast, we set out to explore all the nearby sites. First up is the Bahia Palace. This palace was constructed in the 19th century in the southern part of the Medina. It's a giant palace that covers nearly 8,000 square meters and contains 160 rooms, so there's plenty to explore. On a more historical note, you can visit the ruins of the Gespa of Marrakesh. This contains Al Badi Palace, which was originally constructed in the 16th century during the Saudi dynasty. The palace was later destroyed and the parts were used for other construction projects in Morocco. Today, you can visit the ruins and its lush pools and gardens. The palace is filled with orange trees and even hosts a museum of visual arts.
If you look up, you'll even see migrant storks that use the ruins as nesting sites. Close by are the Sadian tombs, which were hidden for centuries and only rediscovered in 1917. These tombs date back to the time of Sultan Ahmed al Mansur in the late 16th century. As you walk through the Serene Gardens, you'll find a resting place of over 60 members of the Sadian dynasty, including the Sultan himself. There's also the Medjeral Garden, which was created in the 20th century by a French artist. The property has become a popular tourist attraction since being open to the public, and it's unique for its cobalt blue colored structures. These architectural sites offer a welcome break from the commotion of the streets of Marrakesh. We spent three nights in Marrakesh to enjoy all it had to offer. While we enjoyed our stay for the most part, we did uncover some of the darker aspects of traveling to Morocco here. But before I get there, I will say that I did not feel harassed in Marrakesh, which is contrary to what other people have experienced. For the most part, the shopkeepers were respectful. What I found to be horrendous was a rampant animal abuse in the square. First up are the snake charmers. These snakes have their mouths sewn shut and are drugged so that they don't harm their attackers, but as a result of their treatment, they eventually end up starving to death. Second, and the one that I was directly involved and impacted by, are the chained monkeys. These macaques are abused right in front of you as their handlers cruelly drag them by the collars around their throats and force them to perform for tourists. I saw one in the square and it made my blood boil. The handler approached me and I lost it right away. I started shouting without thought. The monkeys haram. Yeah, thank you. Huh? Allah Akbar. This is something that Allah forbids. Allah Akbar. This is haram. Haram. The monkeys haram. Monkey haram. Obviously, my approach here was wrong, and if I had to do this again, I would have definitely chosen a different set of words. But I don't regret my anger. And the final thing that I realized was that many of the shops here appear to be selling, or at least claim to be selling, real elephant ivory, which is often fueled by illegal poaching of these amazing creatures. This is another thing to be aware of as you shop your way through the markets of Morocco. However, these vices do not reflect the culture as a whole and are entirely avoidable parts of the experience. Overall, Morocco is a great travel destination and allows you to delve into a unique slice of the world unlike anything you've experienced before. Well, that's it for this video. If you've stuck around this far, please be sure to subscribe and tune in for the next episode of Maya Globin.